Hello everybody and welcome to another episode of Mixed Mowers and today's episode we're going to take a little look at a little Quocast Briggs & Stratton lawnmower that I picked up as part of this job lot. The sovereign I've already done um, and there's nothing wrong with it apart from the service which is cool. Wouldn't it be great if this is exactly the same? This um, is a little Quocast push mower. Uh, it's in good condition too. It's, it's clean nick so that's cool. Um, we'll take it outside and have a look, see if we can't get it to fire up, see what we can't do with it, and then uh, if it doesn't start and whatever, it's got to come back in for some remedial repairs anyway, which I'll show you. Um, and then we'll have a look from there. Um, incidentally, if this is your first time in watching Mixed Mouse, hit the old subscribe button, whack the old bell, set your notifications to all, and that'll tell you I'll release another video, or in fact, I'm on my weekly Saturday night live stream where you can come and join us. So without further ado, let's get down and dirty, and let's check out this little Briggs & Stratton Quocast lawnmower. Right, here it is, little Briggs and Strat, uh, 450, um, one, uh, 148 cc lawnmower, no fuel, let me get some petrol. Predominantly these have no fuel in because they've been to a recycling center. So we empty all the fuel out. So there's no way of me to even trying to start them when I pick them up. Right, let's uh, give it a prime. Primer bulb is very slow to react, which tells me it could be a carburetor issue, but it is priming to a degree. Very slow to react. No start, let's get it in the shed. Right, post and patch has turned up. <coughs> Mixed mowers. Got a little letter here. Oh, cool. It's a uh, it's a sticker from AJP Garden Machines. Uh, go check him out, he's a cool channel, his name is Ash. Uh, does the same as me in, in his um in his old garage. So I'll put it up on the old board in a minute. Ash, thank you very much for that buddy. Yours has been posted, mate. You should get yours momentarily. In fact, you'll probably get this before you see this video. So, this little machine uh, is a non-start. Um, the handles ran the wrong way as well. That's the first thing I want to sort out, because it must have been OCD, but it's bugging me. So I just want to sort the handle out first, no biggie. Um, literally just got to undo it and spin it round. But someone's put it together wrong from day one. So let's take that off, because it's, it's, just, it's just doing me heading. I can't, I can't sit there and, and stare at that. Should go around that way. It wants another handle, ouch, handle um, holder, and I think it wants a new cable too. But I may end up um, making a cable for it rather than um, buying a new cable. Cheap as do. That's better. Right now, I'm happy. I'll probably end up just taking all of that off because um, it's all split and no good. So that can all come off. And then I might end up spraying these handles anyway. Um, it's no good having it on there if it's full of mold and what have you. So we'll take that off. Uh, no good, no one. Uh, the cable looks like it's about to snap at any minute. Um, possibly. We shall see. I'll chuck some oil down and get me all, my, my uh, cable oiler out and chuck some oil down first, see if that helps it out. Right, so yeah, no no start, no spark or, or whatever. It's not doing anything. So first thing I want to do before we invest in this engine anymore is take the old spark plug out and we'll have a look to see if we can't get the machine to at least fire on a little bit of a carb spray or something similar. Spark plug is a, a champion and it's the original that come with the engine because it's painted black and the year is 2012. It's been tipped up or running extremely rich. I'll say it's been tipped up because it's uh, because it's got so much oil on it. 
Let's put a bit of that down your head. Give that a bit of a happy birthday. Put the old plug back in as it is. I'm not gonna bother cleaning it. There's no point in investing in machines unless you get a little bit of life out of them. Plug in, HT lead on. Let's bring you guys around here. And we'll go for a little fire up, see what happens. Let's check the old blade first. Yeah, that looks good. Right, dead man in. Let's go for a bit of a fire up, see what happens. That fired. fire better than that so I'm gonna put a new plug in because it did actually fire and that, that old plug is probably um, past its best so let's get another B2LM in we're getting through them like anyone's business at the moment let's go have a new B2LM if it uh, runs and has a service anywho I'm not gonna gap it just yet I'll gap it later as part of the service. A bit more of that in. There's a bit of a race against time to get over the other side of the machine to get it fired before that evap evaporates off. Right, let's go again. That's what I wanted to hear, that special noise. Which tells me we have compression, we have spark, we have all the stuff we need it to first engine to fire and to run, which is cool. Let me get set up and I'll come back. Right, we're back in the room. Let's have a let's have the old air filter off. I'm suspecting that to be black because my suspicion is it's been tipped up. Let's get a magnet tray in also, just to start to collect the bits. Yeah, black as your hat. Uh, proper Briggs and Stratton filter in there. That's no good, the man or beast. I can go in the old bin. And I have got here brand new Briggs and Stratton filters. That was a bit of a clean before I put that in there, though, so we'll do it a bit later on. And look, looky, 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 looky. We've got a homemade repair. Let me get you in nice and close. Looky, looky what we have here. We've got duct tape, which is cool. And in, I'm assuming that's something else on there as well. Bit of duct tape. Because the engine's not been running right, they've uh, decided to try and have a, have a go at it. Whereas in fact, everything is actually in place. That spring wants uh, moving over slightly. That's not doing the right job. So a little tiny go at this one, whoever had it before. Um, but the reason is, is that that carburetor is not actually priming. Oh, it is now. Not priming very well though. Very slow to prime, but it is priming now. It wasn't priming beforehand. Lots of leaf litter. So I'm gonna take this carburetor off. We'll do a gasket diaphragm on it, shall we? Uh, I'll try and get that that little tiny spring just to do a bit bit of a better job than what it's doing now because it's hooked over that way like that and I don't think that's that's going to be sufficient this seems to be under a bit of bit of strain here doesn't seem to be as as loose as I would like so let me back you off a touch just so I can get in you've had your little sneaky peek um, I want to grab a 3 8 or 10 mil whichever one it is it'd be one or one or the other and get rid of that hedge trimmer because that's going to be coming back in the video later on. Uh, one three eight and the D wall. I've got which has got a ten mil on it already. And we're just going to start to remove uh, the carburetor initially and the pull cord assembly at the same time because that governor arm is not moving as freely as I would like. And I'm suspicious that if I got if I got duct tape on the springs, then what other treasures do we have inside? I've got a bit of a bird's nest going on, or spider's nest inside. Yeah, that feels really stiff. 
it's doing its job, but it just feels really, really stiff. So this is going to have to have an air compressor all over it because it's got cobwebs, which will make a difference. You know, if a spider's been up in here, um, it will make a difference. Um, he's been weaving his webs everywhere and uh, getting in the way, so to speak. Half inch on the D wall to remove the um, carburetor. That comes off. And then we can slowly retract this off of the engine, lift up the linkage, tip the carburetor back slowly. What's he done here? He's actually got okay. That's why that's why that is under stress. So the spring he's got on here, he's actually been, he's actually put it onto the carburetor arm, not the throttle itself. Uh, that little spring needs to go onto that arm just there, like so. That's why that's under a lot of stress. It's not too bad now. Right, um, let's do carburetor first, because that's my main concern. Then we come back, I can spray this engine WD-40, let it all have a good, let it eat it all up. I've got to do also the um, dead man's handle, there's be a lot of dirt and grime in there as well. It should be the quarter inch to remove that, which it is. So at the back here, I'm just removing the cover off of a dead man's handle. That all comes off. That's got, yeah, that's absolutely filthy. Um, let me just show you very quickly what that looks like. So there's a dead man's handle cable, absolutely smothered in stuff. Can't even see it. Um, so all in all, it's not looking too bad, um, but the engine wants a little bit of love, a little bit of attention. And we're gonna get on and do this carburetor first. It's not priming as well as it should do. Um, spray the rest in WD-40 and what have you, get the air compressor fired up, blast it all off, clean it all up so it looks lovely and then um, we come back. So carburetor's next. Right, here's a carburetor. Now I'm not going to um, actually video and talk you through how to clean one of these because there is millions of them out there, absolutely millions of them. So what I'll do is I'll put you on time lapse and we'll go through it, um, enjoy the music and uh, I'll catch you in a bit.
Right, all in back together. Let's now give it a bit of a start up, see what happens, see if it doesn't fire, and if it does fire and run, what it runs like. too fast. Two ticks. Right, I did say that was running too fast, didn't I? It's just because I, I could just tell that spring was not right. Way too much tension on it. And that's why I want to give it a little bit of a stretch originally. But that spring, that spring don't belong on here. Wrong spring. You can also tell because the angle is wrong. So let's now just remove that spring off of there because she don't blow on there. You can come off. I've got a second hand one here. And this is the reason why I didn't think it's right because this spring should bypass this tag. So all you do literally is just run it through the hole, put it back on itself. And then exactly the same, you just got to call it up. I wish they'd made the same on these springs when they Devise V's. Just got to put it through the hole on the front of this governor. Get a bit of a twist up. Sorry, you can't see much. But I need to get my hands in here too. My right, ego. Fish up through, and now so much less resistance on that spring. So back outside, and we'll go for another fire up. I'm now convinced the gasket's on there. I'm now convinced is, that um, that the uh, engine will now run of more of a satisfactory speed. I may have to pull the tab forward because, um, as I say, you had duct tape on there, so um, it's no good fiddling with stuff like this. You just get, just put the right stuff on it. That's why it costs money to run a mower repair shop, or, or if, that's, if that's what you want to call me. Um, you know, it costs money to get those springs in, they're not cheap. That's why I like to break mowers down, pick up mowers for nothing, and just break them into parts. Because uh, I've got a, a little tray with a set of those second hand parts. I need to do an inventory of, of what I've got. But uh, that now stands a better chance of, of running a bit faster or a bit slower as it should do so. Right, back outside, take two. Right, let's see how this one goes now. Happy with that. Let's take it back in the old shop. 
It's running a little bit quick. Not a lot. I can hear it. I don't know about you guys. It's just running a little bit quicker than what I would like. Um, I might just be able to put a bit of a stretch on that spring just to relieve some of that tension out. But either way, it's running better. Let's put it back on the bench and continue. Okay. So as I say, it's just running a little, a little bit too quick for my liking. Um, I don't think it's uh, going to be detrimental to the engine. Um, it seems to be coping rather well. But it could be low on oil as well, which wouldn't help matters. So we'll check the oil next. Um, that's what we need to do. I'll try and get this down. That's it. And. Um, just check your oil. I mean, I'm going to have another investigation into that there. I might even move that spring a bit further this way, um, just to try and ease that throttle down a touch. But we shall see. Uh, I'm not overly concerned. But uh, it runs quite sweet for what it is. Let me get a slightly bigger screwdriver to check the old oil. Now it's been run for two or three minutes. Just want to see what the old oil is doing. Probably none. They don't tend to. One thing I like about the old Briggs Mowers, they put a yellow dipstick in so you can tell how much oil you've got. Unlike like some of the Hondas have got a clear work, like a transparency style one, which you can't see nothing. Um, it's saying slightly overfilled is what it's saying, but the, the oil is looking very watery. I'm not very happy about the oil, so we'll need an oil change anyway. Just want to go one more time. That oil looks very watery to me. Right, yeah, overfilled. There it is there on both sides. So too much oil in it, so that doesn't help. And then um, we we'll take the oil out of it, all the oil come out and do an oil change. So let me extract it and I'll come back and put some new in. Okay, whilst uh, that oil's been draining, I've looked at the other spring, and the other spring looks like it had been cut off. So I've got another Briggs spring here. So let me now just try and fish this all round together. And try and put the right spring on. No, I'd like it to go that way, it'd be good. Through there, back on itself. And now oh, that feels better. That's a jobby. I should run a bit slower now, I'm hoping. So that's good. Uh, gasket on there first. Although it's broke, it's uh, still going to do its job. So, I need to order some more of them up. We're getting a bit low on those. Let's so find some old ones to break. So I'm hoping that will now do the job with that. So I've just got to top the oil up now, because all the oil is now out of the machine. I need to empty my oil extractor too. That's getting full which is a good sign, it means I'm uh, doing the work, so that's good. So now we'll uh, top up the oil, go back outside and run it again and see uh, what happens. The chances are now I may have to adjust it back because it'd be running too slow, that's be my suspicion. But I'll put some more oil in and I'll come back to you. Right, I've um, done the blade as well, I need doing um, particularly bad. So I've just reground it all the way down through both sides. I take quite a bit off, to be fair, more than what I normally would. Just take that on my old blade doodad. And there you go, exactly balanced, exactly as it should be. So, oh, you're not seeing it, are you? There you go. There you go. Just there. So that's all now done. Um, that bolt took me an absolute age to get off. Now, I'm not sure whether or not that you're going to see me do that, because it says my SIM card had an error. Um, not quite sure what that means, apart from the fact it had an error. Um, but all I'm saying is, is that bolt did not want to come out of of that blade boss uh, out of the shaft. It was massively in there, and uh, even my even my air compressor struggled to get that out. Got it though. The old guy didn't let me down. He got it. But now we're going to see how it goes back in. I'm hoping it into zoop. Go straight in now. I've had it out once, but we shall see. <laughs> it's 
I mean, look, I don't, I don't, I don't like going in there. I might have to start it off by hand initially, just so it bites. But there's something it don't like. I'll give this phrase a bit of a clean up. And that should just zip straight in. So I'm give a quick clean up and I'll come back. Right, I'm gonna give a bit of a clean now. I'm hoping that's gonna do it. But I'm gonna start it off by hand. As I say, it took me a little while to get that bowl out and I thought it was gonna shear off inside, inside the shaft. So that's now started. That's running better now, giving them Fred a bit of a clean up. So let me get the old gun. Make sure it's on forwards. Come on, baby, work with me. That's it. Oh, hang on, what's happening here? Spot the mistake. I'm wondering who's going to be the first to spot that. See how clean them threads are now? Makes a difference. Too tight. Don't have to be on there like He Man put it on. Right, um, oil's done, blaze done, spark plug's done, air filter's done, pull cord's fine, needs nothing else. Outside, fire up, see how it goes. Okay, let's see how it goes. I might have to adjust it as we go. We should see. That's on. Super happy. Okay, so there you go. Nice little lawnmower, all now back up and running, full service, um, including new governor springs. That's what we really needed. Um, done the oil, done all that sort of good stuff. It's fantastic. I'll do a separate little video, I think, on the cable. It does, it's starting to fray a little tiny bit. I just don't want it to fail after two weeks of someone buying it. So I'll do a separate video on how to fix the cable on that, um, or how I do it anyway. Um, so thank you very much for watching this episode of Mixed Mowers. Hope you enjoyed it, hope you found it informative. If you did, bump, you know what I do, give it a thumbs up. Um, any comments you've got down below, you know where to stick them. My Amazon wish list is also down below in the um, pin section or in the about section. Uh, feel free to buy me any spare parts and bits and pieces that you may wish to do so. That's cool. Um, hope you enjoyed it. Hope you found it informative. I'll see you on the next episode of Mixed Mowers. But until then, people, don't forget, take it easy.